Hi guys, this is Sebastian from CodingTheSmartWay.com again, and this is the first part of my new Angular Material Design uh, series, and in that first part we will be focusing on the Angular Material Design library, which is provided by the Angular core team and can be used to bring um, ready-made material design components into your Angular project. And we will see how to install that library and how to make use of some of uh, those components um, by implementing a very simple uh, sample application, which consists of a, of a data entry form, basically. And in the next parts of my Angular material design series, we will be focusing on um, on the other components um, uh, the library is providing. So stay tuned and uh, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is to initiate a new Angular 4 project. And the way we are doing that is by using um, <coughs> the Angular command line interface. And the project's website can be found here at cli.angular.io. And here you can see how to install um, uh, the command line interface. Um, you can install it by using npm install um, minus g for installing it globally on your system at angular slash cli. If you haven't um, installed it before, you can now do so. Um, I have already installed uh, the latest version of uh, the command line interface, so we can directly move on. I'm uh, switching to the command line and now to initiate a new project um, to make use of uh, Angular command line interface um, we need to type in ng that uh, the command and then say new for initiating a new project and then um, giving the name of the project so let's call it ngmd01 um, for example and uh, hit return and now you can see it's uh, downloading uh, the project template and installing all the uh, dependencies uh, by using the node package manager again. And this uh, takes a second to complete. Okay, here we are. Uh, the project has been initiated successfully, as you can read here. And now we can change into that newly created uh, project folder. And just to check out if everything is uh, working correctly, we can start up the uh, development web server here by using the ng command and using the option serve <clears throat> this time. And um, as you can see, it's uh, starting up the web server and it's running the web server on um, port 4200. And we have to wait here just a moment so that everything is packed and compiled. Okay, here we are. And now we can go back to the browser and um, see that um, on port 4200, the application is responding. And that's uh, the result we are getting back from the standard Angular template, which was downloaded. So next we uh, can um, install the Angular Material Design uh, package um, for our project. And again, the project's website can be found at material.angular.io. And you can see here you can uh, access an overview of the components the library is providing. You can also access uh, the guides here um, with further instructions. Um, so let's install it, um, go back to the command line and I'm stopping, um, the development web server process, which is uh, still running here. Okay. And to, to install the library, we can use the node package manager again, and we need to say npm install, um, minus save, because I'd like to add those dependencies. Um, to my package.json file um, within my project as well. And now I need to um, uh, give two package names here. And the first is the um, library itself, which is um, um, available um, with the package name at Angular 
slash material and um, a second package needs to be installed and that's angular slash cdk cdk um, in this case stands for component development kit and is uh, just comprising some general purpose tools um, that are used for, used for building um, components and which are not directly related to a material design itself but used by the material um, design library so we need to install both okay hitting return to initiate the installation process here now again downloading the packages um, and installing um, both packages um, and um, and dependencies into the node modules folder of uh, our angular project okay here we are you can see installation has been completed successfully and now we can move on to the next step okay um, some of the angular design components um, are making use of advanced uh, transition effects and uh, those transition effects are um, using uh, another library which is called angular animations library and to enable those transition effects in our application um, we need to install that library and um, <clears throat> I'm going back here to the command line and to install the angular animations library it's again an npm install call and again i'm using the save option to store it into the packet.json file and the package name here is at angular slash animations okay so it's downloading the animations library and installing it into the node modules folder of our project again Okay, now we need to make sure that the animations library is activated within our project. And that's the reason why I'm now opening up the code editor. And um, in this case, I'm using my favorite code editor, Atom. <clears throat> okay, here we are. Now to, to activate um, the animations library, I need to open up my... Um, app.module.ts file um, that's the main the main module of our application and first of all i need to add an import statement here and that import statement is importing browser animations module from um, the at angular slash platform browser slash animations um, library and i um, need to make sure um, that the browser animations module is added here to the array which is assigned to um, the imports property um, here so I'm adding it here browser animations module okay like so Okay, next um, let's talk about themes. Angular Material is supporting themes. And a theme is basically a set of colors which are applied to the material design components we are using. And uh, you can see it here on uh, the project's website. Um, here in the upper right corner, you can select one of the uh, four uh, pre-built themes. <coughs> For example, I can change the seam here and you can see the color is changing as well and uh, using a seam is mandatory so we do need to, uh, to include um, a seam in our project we can use custom um, seams of course but to to make things easier at first let's use one of the pre-built um, seams and to do so we simply need to go to uh, styles.css here in the src folder and uh, add the following import statement here which is including the uh, standard indigo pink theme so let's save it okay so the next thing we need to do is to add gesture support because some of the material design components for example the md uh, slide toggle component or the md slider md tooltip and so on are supporting um, gestures and um, for supporting gestures they uh, making use of a library which is called hammer 
uh, JS. And we need to install that library as well. So back here on the command line, I need to say npm install um, minus save hammer JS. Okay, like so. Okay, here we are, it's installed. And now I can go back to my code editor in um, my um, app dot module dot ts file and they're uh, simply imported here okay like so so finally there's one last thing we need to include uh, the material um, the angular material design library is uh, although um, containing uh, material icons and if you want to make use of material icons you need to include um, the corresponding um, font and to do so let's switch back to the website here to the getting started page and you can see it here um, it's an optional step it's step six we can simply copy that link element here and insert it in index.html um, within our project so here is index.html and within the head section uh, we need to insert that link element, which is including the material icons font. Okay, so let's save it. Um, now the project setup is ready. We have installed everything what's needed to make use of um, material uh, design components within our Angular application. Next, we can go on uh, with our sample application and now uh, continue to implement a simple form and making use of material design components. Okay, so to implement um, the form in our application, I'd like to add a new component so that we can implement that form within that new component and then later include that component in our app's main component, which is app component. And to add a new component here um, in our uh, project we can again make use of angular command line interface by using the ng uh, command here at the um, terminal and uh, to generate a new component i need to um, use the option g for generate and then say okay i would like to generate a component so i need to say component here and the component should be named my dash form okay so you can see it's creating um, various new files in our application um, <clears throat> here within um, the uh, src app my form folder you can see it here that's the newly created folder we have a ts file here which is containing the component class um, with the annotation part here uh, then we have the uh, spec.ts file which is for testing which we can ignore for the moment then we have the corresponding html file which is com containing the html code the template code for uh, that component and a uh, cascading style sheet file here which is empty and uh, there is switch back you can see there is another file and that file is updated it's our app.module.ts file which is containing the implementation of our um, application module so it has been updated um, another import statement here for my form component um, has been added automatically and my form component is also added to the array to the array which is um, assigned here to the declarations property so that my form component is now part of our app module so um, to be able to use some of the um, material design components in our application we first need to import um, uh, the corresponding modules here again in um, app.module.ts and as we would like to implement uh, a simple data entry form we basically need two um, modules from the angular material design library um, and the import is added uh, right here so import and then I'm importing md input 
module and md button module um, from at angular slash material okay and then um, to activate both modules for our application I of course need to add md input module and md button module here to the imports array as well Okay, now we are ready to make use of the components belonging to um, MD input module and MD button module. Okay. Uh, furthermore, I need to import the Angular Forms um, module here as well because we would like to implement an Angular form, of course. And um, so I'm adding the import statement here. So it's import forms module from at angular forms and of course don't forget to add the forms module here in the imports array as well okay so the angular form uh, should be implemented as an uh, template driven form and um, to be able to use data binding um, we first uh, need to implement um, a data model class so we can bind again against um, the properties of that class and to do so uh, for implementing that data model class I'm adding here within the app folder a new file and um, our form should um, offer input elements for entering address data so I'm naming the data model class address and uh, the file name is address dot ts okay and uh, implementing a data model class is easy we are using the export keyword here and then the class keyword and the name of the class okay and then using the constructor syntax to define the properties as constructor parameters and uh, I can use a public keyword here to define those constructor parameters at the same time as class members. So we will have a first name. I'm using the question mark here to uh, define that um, this is optional of type string. Then we do need last name optional string um then we need the address information type string again and then uh, i do need a city and uh, the state finally uh, the postal code optional and again of type string so and that's our data model class so as you can see I've already placed my editor here right beside the browser window so I can see all the changes we will um, be implementing in the next steps um, within my form component and to make um, the output of my form component visible I need to change um, a few things here. Uh, first of all, I'm changing the selector here. Um, just remove the app dash. So that is uh, the selector will only be my dash form. And then I'm opening up app component.html and uh, I'm removing the content which is inside of that file here and um, let's say we will have an h, uh, h3 here in that case and the headline is address form and then i'm including um, my form here as an element 
Okay, and now I'm saving that file and you can see it's immediately updating the output here in the browser and now I'm getting um, back um, a headline here from that file and um, the um, HTML output which is produced um, by my form component. Okay, so next we can implement the HTML code for the form and therefore I'm switching over to my dash form dot component dot HTML and uh, remove the content um, which is a weighable here in that file and then I'm starting out with a new <coughs> form tag. Okay, let's say we are uh, assigning a class here um, form with so I've already defined I can show you quickly here in my form.component.css two classes uh, form with which is defining a width property of 500 pixels and later on we will be using the full width class which is defining a width with um, the value 100 percent okay here I'm using the form width class and I'm binding uh, the ng submit event here to a method we will be implementing later on which is called on submit and this method will be called each time the user is submitting uh, this form and then I will create a template variable here my form ng form okay so um, within that form first um, we do need two input elements for um, first name and for last name because we would like to create an address form and that are the first two uh, properties we would like to receive an user input for and uh, first name and last name should be displayed um, one on the left side and one on the right side so um, in one line and therefore I'm using a table here to get this layout okay table um, okay the table element I'm assigning the class full width <coughs> this time and cell uh, spacing of zero uh, Okay, let's use a tr element here and a td. And within the first column, um, let's use the md-input-container because that's uh, one of the um, components of uh, the Angular Material Design library which is used to wrap our input element in. Okay. And again, we are assigning a class here, um, full width to, to um, assign a width of 100%. And within that empty input container element, I'm using an input element um, of type text. And I'm using the directive empty input um, from the material design library and defining a placeholder text let's say first name um, assigning an id it's first name um, then using um, the two-way binding syntax of Angu angular um, and binding the value of this input element to um, address dot first name so address will be um, um, an object of our class address we have defined earlier we will create address later on when we are continuing with the implementation of the uh, TypeScript code for that component and finally I'm using the name property here to assign a name and that's again first name okay next um, I think we can copy it for the last name text. Okay, this time should be last name. ID is all the last name. I'm binding it to address dot 
last name and name equals last name. Okay. Okay, so now you can see uh, the browser output um, has already been updated. And now I can click here on two input fields and you see both input fields are available and displayed in material design. Um, I can already enter text, but one thing is missing here. As you can see, the placeholder text is not there. So I do not know um, if I need to enter the first name here or the last name. Um, and the reason uh, the placeholder text is not shown here is because our website and you can see it here in the console is um, reporting errors because first name property um, it, it's saying cannot read property first name of undefined and that's clear because uh, we try to bind to um, address first name and also last name and the address object is not yet defined and not yet created so in order to get rid of those errors here let's quickly switch over to um, my-form.component.ts that's the file where the my form component class is created and what we need to do here is uh, to um, uh, create that address object we are binding um, to and uh, first of all i need to import of course address and i'm importing it from our address class okay and then i can create a new object here let's say address new address okay now you can see all the uh, errors are gone and the output here now is containing both text fields um, with the corresponding um, placeholder text displayed. So now I can <coughs> enter my name here and last name. And you can see now both um, input elements are working uh, with material design applied as expected. Okay, let's switch back to um, our um, HTML file. And we need, to, of course, to continue our implementation here because we do need a few more input elements for our form. So right here after the table element, I'm using a paragraph, um, a P element for my next input element. And I'm starting out again by using the md-input-container uh, element. Once again, um, let's assign the class full with here again. Okay, like so. And now I need a text <coughs> area. Um, I don't need those attributes here. Instead, I'm using um, MD input again, a placeholder text, which is address in that case. I'm assigning the ID of address, um, binding it to my um, model. Um, this time it's um, address dot address and uh, assigning a name. Okay, so let's save it. Here we are. Now you can see I have a text area element displayed in material design. I can resize it here to extend it from multiple lines. Okay, it's working. So next I need um, three more input elements. I do need an input element for um, city, um, state and postal code. And um, for layout reasons, I'm using a table again. Um, Okay, let's use a cell <coughs> spacing of zero. Uh, TR, TD. Um, in the first column again. Um, so let's maybe copy it from here. 
Um, so now it's a city element and I'm changing the placeholder text here to city. ID a city as well, uh, binding to address dot city property and the name is city as well. So that was the first one. Then let's bring in a second one, which is uh, state. <coughs> Okay, um, binding it to address dot state, and finally the last input element I do need here is for uh, the postal code. Okay, we will have a placeholder text here as well. Um, it's postal code ID is uh, postal code the property of our address object is postal code as well and the name again postal code so now we need a few more properties here um, I'd like to define a max length um, of, let's say, five. Um, and I would like to define a template um, variable so I can access that value here, postal code. And now I can use here inside my MD input container I'm able to use another element um, to give uh, further guidance for the user. I'm using an md-hint element, okay, like so. Um, let's use a line and assign end to align it at the end of the input element. And within md-hint, I'm using the expression syntax here to access um, the, <clears throat> the postal code template variable and using the value property to access the value which was entered by the user and reading out the lengths. Um, and then I'm displaying off five so that the user is informed um, how many um, characters are, are currently entered and uh, what's the maximum length here. So now you can see it here. Um, we have city, New York, for example, we can put in a state here. And now if I go to postal code, um, if I'm t starting to type in a code here, you can see it's updating the counter and it's displaying um, the maximum length here. And if I reach five and try to enter more, uh, digits here. It's not allowing me to enter more. It's limiting the input to five um, digits. Okay, so finally we do need to bring in the submit button for our form. And again here under the last table element I'm starting out with a paragraph and um, bringing in a button uh, which is of type submit. And I would like to display um, that button in material design too. So I'm using um, the MD raised button directive here and the text on the button is simply submit. Okay, here we are. Uh, now we have a submit button. In our form element uh, here, if I scroll up again, we have defined that the uh, submit event should be handled by a method which is called unsubmit and now of course we um, do need to implement that uh, submit button um, to make the submit functionality work. Uh, let's switch over to my-form.component.ts again and here in the component class I can add the implementation of on submit and to keep 
things very simple. I just using the alert function to bring in to to uh, to show a pop up to the user, which is saying thanks for submitting, um, and maybe printing out the data of the form in a JSON format. So I'm using JSON stringify this address because the address object is containing um, the current values of the form. So, okay, let's save it. Now let's wait. Okay, it's updated here and now I can input just some information here and then hit button submit and you can see the pop-up is coming up uh, saying thanks for submitting the data and here you can see um, the JSON string is um, displaying uh, the properties with the current values assigned. Okay. This was Sebastian from CodingTheSmartWay.com. Um, thanks very much for watching. Um, I hope now you have a better understanding of the Angular Material Design Library. And um, if you do like my videos here, don't um, forget to subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Also, don't forget to visit my blog at CodingTheSmartWay.com. And I hope to see you back in the next video. Bye.